What's up guys? How you doing? Coming up to you with another build. Now what is this build? Well, we're gonna be back on solar. <laughs> You're like, oh man, another solar build? I just like the idea of this build. I call it the Master Blaster because we're gonna be using an exotic that is not normally used. Ash and Wake. I think this kind of thing kind of fell by the wayside with this little bit of a rework where you can stun unstoppable champions, which is actually pretty useful. Now, what is the point of this build? The point of this build is to use your fusion grenade and be careful don't throw it too close to yourself because it can kill you but you throw your fusion grenade you hit a couple targets it gives you some grenade energy back it creates a sunspot you go stand in that sunspot or run through that sunspot hit something with a hammer strike or a melee cause that, those things to also explode into an ignition and you've now built up like two to three times pouring flames and then by that time you have your grenade back up which then you can throw another grenade but now it's Roaring Flames times three, which means you can hit a beefier target with it and it'll do a ton of damage. And this ton of damage, if you kill certain targets, will refund a majority of your grenade energy because of Ashen Wake's exotic trait, right? Fusion grenades gain increased throw speed, so you don't need fastball. I know I have fastball in the dim link, but you don't necessarily need it and it explodes on impact instead of sticking to a target and exploding like a normal fusion grenade it explodes on impact and it can stun unstoppable champions and final blows fusion grenades grant grenade energy now in crucible if you kill a guardian with this fusion grenade and have ashen wakes on it will refund your entire grenade energy so if you get roaring flames times three you can literally run around just one shot targets but for pve you have to kill like four enemies that are just regular red, red Red bars and then maybe some yellow bars i think champions if you kill them with your grenade will refund your grenade but the point of this is to get your roaring flames started going and you want to keep your roaring flames up right and another way to do this is by having incandescent weapons and creating sunspots i was using Jotun to go with the whole idea of ash and wake and lobbing a giant fireball at the enemy and it explodes because Jotun does a very similar thing and when you have the catalyst it grants this thing incandescent which is good now it's an enhanced incandescent but it is a solid thing to have and then i also was using a sword the throne cleaver now i know that the throne cleaver isn't very easily accessible to everybody anymore but i will say that when you hit you could just slam like two or three targets and everything just ignites an ignition with this thing but again not easily accessible to everybody now a few other heavies that i would say that are kind of cool and kind of go with this idea of just making everything explode with ignitions and creating sunspots you have apex predator with incandescent now what you want to do is buff up that blast radius and get the hat obviously have incandescent and hitting multiple targets with that i don't think most people know this but hitting multiple targets with a heavy weapon and them all dying to the heavy weapon will cause ignitions into a huge group of enemies and or will cause incandescent and every target releasing that incandescent burst will immediately ignite a ton of targets Another good heavy weapon uh, is Cry Mutiny. Now this was a ritual weapon from Season of the Plunder and it has Incandescent and Vorpal. Now you can get this weapon pretty easily by going to the Monument of Lost Lights and picking it up. It will be under Legacy Gear. You see it right there, Cry Mutiny. Apex Predator, you do have to do the Last Wish Raid or you could try to... F There's several videos showing you you can get Last Wish weapons without doing Last Wish. I'm not going to show that here because that's a pain to get to, but you can get Apex Predator from it. Also, you could just use a machine gun with incandescent if you want to, but I feel like rockets or a grenade launcher really goes into that idea. Now, there is another play that you could do. You could do something like Aberrant Action this season's rocket sidearm with incandescent and then having something like Dragon's Breath. The only issue I had with Dragon's Breath is sometimes it's very easy to kill yourself. And if you're trying to go in for a hammer strike or trying to go in, even if you're using the bonk hammer, then it's very risky because Dragon's Breath is prone to kill yourself with. So what is this build? How do you build it? I kind of went over the basics of the flow. So generally I have hammer of soul on because hammer of soul is just really good with soul invictus you have rally barricade i use straight lift it doesn't really your jump really doesn't matter i use hammer strike because if you get a kill with hammer strike then it immediately ignites the target and your hammer strike is buffed by roaring flames so if you kill something with your grenade first then your hammer strike will become stronger then obviously fusion grenades then you have roaring flames where final blows with solar abilities or ignitions increase the damage of your solar abilities this stacks three times this is really good and getting your grenade to do a lot of damage and then soul invictus so those things that do die into the grenade 
grenade or your shoulder charge create sunspots or anything that dies with any type of scorch effect on it will create a sunspot and sunspots are really good because they give you ability regen while you're standing or you walk through while the buff of soul invictus is active you get a bunch of ability regen and it's very useful and it makes hammers like a hundred times better now for fragments i like to use ember of searing defeating scorch targets grant melee energy and create a fire sprite for uh, ember of ashes you apply more scorch stacks so you can get more ignitions powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant this is just to get your radiant buff now this season you don't really have to use this because you can just pick up orbs and get radiant for free but i was using this last season with this because was, there wasn't if you're not you if you weren't using a precision weapon last season it wasn't very easy to get radiant so you don't have to use this this season but it is recommended if you don't want to use that artifact mod for whatever reason and then your solar ignition spread to affected targets now we're going to go back to ember of Syrian because i was looking at this Maybe I was using this to get more recovery because I don't really have any benefits from picking up fire sprites. You could really exchange this for whatever you want, like defeating targets with solar ignitions, grant grenade energy, ember of blistering, uh, ember of eruption. But ember of eruption is not necessarily necessary with this season's artifact, but it's still good if you want to use it. Now we move on to armor mods. Now, if you look at the dim link, you'll be able to see all the armor mods that I have, but essentially the most important parts, right? We have on our helmet, we have obviously a solar solar siphon so that when you're getting kills with your whether that be your heavy weapon or your special weapon you are getting create and creating orbs and that feeds into the rest of your build to make your uh, ability uptime really high hands-on because i was liking to use hammer strike and when you do get those ignition kills it gives you a ton of super energy i really just had font of wisdom on so that you just gain a passive increase to your intellect i think this is a plus 20 with one mod on and realistically the only other thing that's kind of important on the armor mods i like having momentum transfer and impact induction because you know when you use your grenade you're getting more melee cooldown so you know this is feeding into you using your hammer strike more and then impact induction. When you use that melee, then you get a shorter cooldown on your grenade, really feeding into itself. And as you probably see in the gameplay, it, you really get your abilities a lot if there's stuff to kill. And realistically, the flow of the build is to keep your roaring flames going so that when your abilities do come online, that you can just flat out just insta kill most things. Now for stat spread, you really, the main important one is obviously 100 resilience. And then I went for 100 strength to get my melee back as quick as possible now the reason for that is because you get a ton of grenade energy for just getting kills with your fusion grenade and you can put a lot of supplemental mods on to decrease your grenade energy cooldown and standing in sunspots decrease your grenade energy cooldown that i felt like my melee was the only thing that was really lacking with this build because as you can see with strength at tier 10 i'm getting a 45 second melee cooldown ability at base so it's really short and well as short as it can be technically without obviously adding mods to help that along and then my grenade cooldown is at 56 second tier 6. so if i had tier 100 obviously i could get a way sh shorter cooldown but i honestly didn't really feel like it was necessary like yeah you could do it and those Resilience, Discipline, and Strength would be the most important stats that you would need for this build. But Discipline, I think with the ability regen from Ash and Wake, as long as you're getting kills with your grenade, then you really don't need that much Discipline. And onto Weapons. For Kinetic Weapons, I don't really think it really matters all that much. You just use whatever you kind of want, and that's kind of all that's important. It just It's a supplemental weapon if you're ever out of ammo with the other stuff that you're using. Because realistically, as you'll see in the gameplay, most of the time you want to use your heavy and your special weapon because they're the things that are creating incandescent. But again, a majority of your build is going to be using your special or your heavy weapons. And again, artifact mods, realistically, you don't really have to use anything. But if you really want to like pump up the potency of the build, I think using radiant orbs and solar fulmination is a good set of artifact perks to include in this build but again last season i was using this and i was doing just fine and those just increase the lethality even more than what it already was last season it was really good i was using this in legend onslaughts and doing just fine so that is
customize the build I have for you. I have a dim link in the description if you're interested. Again, remember important stats are resilience, discipline, and strength. And that's kind of all I have for you guys. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, see something else, then let me know. And I want to thank you if you made it this far. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys later.